The first step is throw away your bulky reference book and start Come on, we don't want to waste all our time in studying I bet you are going to feel like I'm the smartest kid in the classroom Hey you, it is me Here's another video a lot of you guys have asked for which is how to score A plus for science subjects, specifically chemistry and physics. Before you start, remember to subscribe to this channel because I have more helpful tips to be shared in my coming video. So stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get ahead. The first step is show away your reference book. The f yeah. And start making your own notes. The notes will be your only reference afterwards. For example, after you have made your own notes on structure of atom, the next time when you want to revise about this topic, you won't go to your thick reference book, you won't go to your textbook either, the only thing that you go to is your own notes. I'm not exaggerating here, but your own notes is going to help you to pass with flying colours in the exams. Which leads to my next question, how to make good notes. Don't worry, it is not hard to make good notes that helps you to score A plus in exams. There are only three important things that you have to keep in your mind when you're making your own notes. First, keep it concise, aka short and sweet. Your notes are supposed to contain all the answer keys for questions in exam, but keep it short. Trust me, you don't want to read a lengthy essay explaining on carbon compounds a day before the exam because obviously we are short of time. The second thing is write down mnemonic for stuff that make no sense at all. For example, diatomic molecules have no fear of ice cold bath. Taking away hey no, which means HNO, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, they become halogen. What I did is just sprinkling some sense into some nonsense stuff. I love mnemonic and I'm still using them in my current study and will continue to use them. Feel free to create your own mnemonics. Just now, hey no is actually my creation. I know I don't have to say it, but I'm just proud of myself. And share it with your friends of course because teaching actually strengthens your memory. And sure, it's time, okay. the third thing is never try to make your notes aesthetic. Making aesthetic notes consumes a great deal of time and efforts. And remember, those YouTube videos on aesthetic notes, they are just YouTube videos. They are specially made for eyeball catching. It is not realistic, it is not cost effective. A simple and tidy notes will get you to your goal, so why ever bother being extra? Come on, we don't want to waste all our time in studying. I mean, it is your teenage year, so spend some time in your hobby play football, sing a song, call your friends, or just gossip with your mom about the neighbors who bring their pets to your house to shit there every morning. That is really not my neighbor. Life is hard. Don't dedicate the whole time of your life in studying because it doesn't work that way. Why am I so sure of that? Because I try and the results say no. <laughs> Another question arises. What if our teacher already made the notes? You can stop watching this video. Bye. Just kidding, hold on. I must say that you are the lucky baby. If your teachers already made you simplified notes in bullet points and the notes are complete, feel free to use your teacher notes. I was also one of the lucky baby back then. Some chapters I use my teacher's note and some chapter I still do my own notes because I love the process of focusing and making notes. The fourth thing is the timing of making your own notes. I suggest you guys to do your own notes a night before the lesson is taught. I bet you are going to feel like I'm the smartest kid in the classroom. I am the one, the one. And always stay alert when your teacher say, this is important. Mark it or highlight it in your notes because they are probably going to come up in your school test or even SPM. But you all have those lazy and forgetful days. So as long as you make the notes when your memory is still fresh, like within a week after the lesson is taught, it is still fine. The second step is understanding the concept. In my biology video, I suggest you guys to read biology from success by Oswald Faja. But that is not the case for chemistry and physics. For chemistry and physics, 
understanding the concept is much more important than memorizing the key facts. Because if you don't understand the concept, you won't be able to apply them in the test. Reading something for 10 times doesn't mean you understand that. Now, I'm going to tell you the two ways to make sure that you really understand the essential concepts in physics and chemistry. The first way is to explore the examples. I believe there are many times when we come across a principle after reading that definition and we are like, what the hell are you talking about? For example, Pascal principle is defined as a law that states that pressure exerted on an enclosed fluid is transmitted equally. Aha! Uh -huh. I know the meaning of each word in the sentence, but I don't get it. What if I explain it with an example? Pascal principle means that regardless of where we apply the pressure, the bottom, the middle, the top, the toothpaste is going to come up anyway. Did you hear that thing from your brain? Because I just heard it from mine. Sorry mother earth. The second way is to practice question. I know you feel like skipping to the next part of the video but let me ask you a question. If you get a practice question wrong, are you happy about that? If the answer is no, you should hear this. The question that you got wrong in the practice questions is a fantastic resource for you to clarify your misconception. Getting a question wrong is not going to harm you in any way, but the assumption that I understand this is going to be extremely hurtful. The thing is, our brain tends to persuade us to take an easy way out, or simply means to be lazy. This is supported by a research that shows that when we are given two options, our brain will trick us to pick an easy option that requires less effort. Assuming I understand it and then binging on Instagram, it's obviously an easier option than test your understanding by doing practice questions. So, never trust your brain. Just do it. Never see failure as a mistake or an evidence that says that you are not studying properly. Instead, see them as a valuable opportunity to be better. Not only in exam, but also as a person in life. The third tip is the tip that I hope somebody told me about this, but nobody. It is revise the earlier chapters one or two days before the exam. Most of us, when we revise for physics or chemistry, we will go sequentially from the first chapter to the last chapter. Very often than not, if we don't revise the earlier chapters before the exam, we are going to forget a lot of simple stuff in chapter 1 or chapter 2. By doing this, we lose a lot of marks that we shouldn't have lost. So remember, a day before the exam, always go back to the earlier chapters to refresh your memory on the simple and basic stuff that you don't want to do mistake in the exam. At the end of the video, I will share my traumatizing experience of skipping this step. It was a horrendous experience. So stay tuned. The fourth tip is borrow your friend's graded test paper. This is not mainstream and I believe it is not mentioned by any other but it works wonderfully for me. What I did is that after our teachers graded our test paper and gave back to us, I will always pick around to see anyone who scores higher than me. Then, I would steal. No, I mean borrow. What I noticed is that my friends can answer in a shorter sentence than me and yet still get full marks for the questions. It is about the answering technique and also how on point they think. Comparing our answers and also our friends' answers enables us to appreciate the difference so we will know what to work on later. And this does not only work for science subjects, it works for languages as well. That is how I improve my essay. I used to borrow essay from my friend who score higher than me. What I notice is that they make less grammar mistakes, they are more creative, and they use a lot of fancy words. So now I know what to work on for my essays. I will double check the grammar before I submit them. I try to be more creative with my essay and I learn more vocab. Now let's summarize the four tips to score A plus in physics and chemistry. First, make your own notes. 
There are four things that you want to remember. Keep it short and sweet. Use mnemonic. Forget about being aesthetic. Am I being blunt? Yes. Am I being realistic? Yeah. And the last one, the timing of making your own notes. Second, understand the concept by exploring the examples and doing practice questions. Third, revise the earlier chapters one or two days before the exam. And fourth, borrow your friend's test paper for comparison and improvement. Story time! So back then, I was preparing for my chemistry exam. And a night before the exam, me and my friends were so absorbed in solving the hard questions. Uh, so obviously, I forgot to revise the earlier chapters before the exam. And on the test day, a lot of simple and basic stuff come out and I can't answer them. That was not only detrimental to my chemistry exam, it also influenced badly on my next test, biology, on the next day. I don't have the mood to study because I thought I ruined all my efforts. Right now, even when I'm talking about it, I feel the pain as well because that was so stressful and I don't want any of you guys to experience that. So please, refresh your memory a day before the exam. Another thing is that recently I feel a bit dejected, just a bit, not too much. When my friend said that she is not quite supportive of my channel because it kind of instills the concept of academic success is the top priority matter in life. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I make a lot of videos on how to score well in exam. But that doesn't mean that I'm advocating for like academic excellence is the only way to succeed. The truth is, I embrace the differences in people. I think the most beautiful thing about people is that we are so different, we are unique, we are talented and gifted in our own way. And sometimes our talents is just not with the academic field and that is completely okay. I'm not comfortable with the saying that we often tell, especially the Asian kids, if you want to do well, just study. And if you don't score well in exam, you are not good enough. I think this is a very old school thought. I don't want any of you guys to think that if I can do well in my exam, I'm a total failure because that is not true. You are unique, you are enough, you define yourself. If you watch until now, thank you and comment below with a heart emoji because I would love to know each and every one of you. That's it for this video. Love you guys. See ya.